You're watching The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee. Uh, we got one of my favorite people in the building right now. Yeah. I'm here with Mark Twain, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the nigga Mark Twain. <laughs> D.L. Hughley is here. What's good, my What's brother? What's up, man? I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you, sir. You know what it is? Because most people can't, they're not, they're not. Like they have hyphenates, but they're not necessarily good at them. Mm -hmm. But you were, you know what you great at being you. That's it. And no matter, it's like water to come to your house. Some you use to wash clothes, some you take a shower, some you cook with. Same source, different uses. And that's a dope way to to live. And Angie, with her fine ass. Mm. <laughs> Stop it. This is not sexual harassment because we don't work together, so don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're not making her feel uncomfortable. I'm either. not making her feel yet. Goddamn it. <laughs> Uh, listen, the thing with DL is he can get away with saying anything anyway. Because I think as a comedian, you have the license to do that. So you might be like, hey, what's good? And I'll just laugh because it's still funny. But I, I think, uh, you know, it's so funny because now when I watch comedians who feel like they have to ask for permission to have a thought that's separate, then it's, it's, it's silly to me. Like, yeah. you don't have to ask permission. The only way, my, I, I have to ask permission from my father when, he was, when I was a kid. I don't have to ask permission from an audience. Like, they either dig it or they don't. Or the worst that's gonna happen to me is that Twitter get mad. What the fuck is that? I don't. Well, you gotta ask permission if you want to pull your dick out and jerk off. Yeah, like, you want like Louis C.K. Yeah. But I'm just saying. But I didn't even think like to me like that whole like I understand the premise of the Me Too movement. I understand, and I think I just, my problem with it yeah. is that it's inconsistent. Yes, it's like there's a difference between Louis D, Louis C.K. and Harvey Weinstein. Yes, there's a difference between Aziz and and you know Matt Lauer. Yes, there's a big difference. But just like that gradations of murder. Uh, you don't. Everybody is murder one, murder two. They they cast those cats all in the same thing, and they were different people. Like I think Bill Cosby should be in jail. I just think he should have company. Now hold on, now I got I got to push back on you a little bit because I agree with you. But during the whole Kavanaugh situation, mm -hmm. that's one of those ones where that didn't fall under the Bill Cosby umbrella. Like they had, to, they had to meme up saying, "What's the difference between Bill Cosby and Kavanaugh?" I'm like, "Well, Kavanaugh is accused of being drunk and groping a woman. Bill Cosby was drugging and raping. That's a big difference." Right? No, no, they're, they're, no, no, no. He attempted to rape that girl. Kavanaugh attempted to rape the girl. Right. Yeah. She escaped. So it's not, uh, uh, he, he didn't even, he attempted to rape her. And the difference between Bill Cosby and Kavanaugh is, is, is complexion. That's really the truth. And I think that they all should be <laughs> viewed the same. Well, you, don't, you don't think so? I think nah, I'm going to be honest with you. was drugging and raping women, man. Yeah. No, no, I'm not, whether it's one or, we're talking about numbers. But the idea of taking something from a woman against her will is, is the same premise. Now, numbers, okay. But Kavanaugh sought to use... He, he tried to take something a woman wasn't giving him. And he has p power and privilege. Like, to me, that was about white guys, powerful white guys, protecting another powerful white guy. I, to me, I don't see any difference between, like, to me, Bill Cosby should be in prison next to Catholic priest. Yeah. Whoever. Yeah. I think the problem with me is that so many perverts, like, get, get jobs where they can wear robes. I don't understand that. Like, <laughs> 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 well, you should. You shouldn't. If you a pervert, you should have. You should have pants on. But. Always. My only problem. I don't have a problem with the Me Too movement because I got three daughters. So mm -hmm. anything that makes the world a better place for women, I'm all for. I just don't like them weaponizing it right. to try to take people out. Like right. you saw what they're trying to do with Mueller now. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I, I don't but like even that. he. But 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 it, it's the same thing. Uh, to me, we we live in a society um, uh, that what the and the and the biggest problem I have with Me Too movement is that women tend not to believe women. Nothing when bad. women believe women, this will be a lot different thing. Yeah, Look yeah. at the biggest defenders of people who are accused of these atrocities. Women. Here's the thing. Oh, Here's explain that a little bit more. Look at look yeah. at everybody. Look at all the women for Kavanaugh. Yeah, look yeah, at all yeah. the women who who defended Bill Cosby. Look at all. If you go on, uh, even right now, look at look at the women who support and 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 look at how many women say I'm a victim and I acted like this, so I don't see why she didn't act like I would have acted. Right. And women will say that. But I will say this, going back to Bill Cosby and that, because you had your own experience when you Well, he never Bill tried. It. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Not bring like that. Like, drug you, D.L.? Hang on a minute, Not that it. type of D.L. I heard but, you um, D.L. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he do it so much, they named it after him. <laughs> Wait a minute. But let's be clear. His thing, not just about his complexion, it, it was his power. He got away with that for decades before sure. anything happened. It's all power, though. You know? So that is not about his complexion. It was... But when you look at uh, uh, Kavanaugh, he got away with it for decades, too. Yeah, but I think um, this is the first time these allegations have been brought up, right, against Kavanaugh. Um, for Bill Cosby, this has been going on with women coming forward and accusing him whether or not those cases ended up going right. anywhere was a different situation. I think we're making the same point. Yeah. I, I think that what, no matter how long ago it was or how many it was, they are the same type of men where they've used, um, you know, one, one used celebrity and one used wealth and privilege 
to take advantage of somebody. Because people and, tend to think Bill Cosby's allegations just happened. No. And it's not true. No. And 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 my whole problem with my, my whole problem with the uh, Bill Cosby thing, it had already been adjudicated. Even though I believe he did it, it had already been adjudicated. He had already settled. Then we go back and do it again. To me, like it, the law works specific ways. You 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 know, just like uh, uh, he had already that had already been settled, and then they went back and did it again under the auspice of what of, to, of the prism of today. Well, people are looking at it now, and and to me that was what was wrong about it. I, I thought I thought he was just what he was before, and he. You had settled it, and they, they, had, they had gone away, and now all of a sudden it comes back because people are in a different mindset. There's one thing that I really want to know about the Cosby case more than anything. Was well, the nigga really trying to buy NBC? <laughs> but, you know, a, a lot of people say that, but Bill Cosby, I know this for sure. Now, Bill Cosby, when we were on Def Jam, he hated Def Jam. He hated it, and he sat on the board of Time Warner, and he actively sought to make sure that we didn't get to keep going. Like, all the cats wow. you love right now, yeah. you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't see had he been on because he liked it done a certain way. And so, to me, um, I, I think that that comedy, like anything else, is is free expression. And it has to go where it goes. But he clearly tried to, and I don't know if it was a conspiracy because he was trying to buy NBC. But he clearly wanted comedy done a certain way. He clearly didn't want black people having certain conversations. He clearly believed that this was the way it's supposed to go. And he clearly was hypocr- hypocritical. About it. Mm-hmm. As, as an OG king of comedy, what do you think of all of this uh, comedian beef? I think it, that's been brewing the past couple of months. They can go home and cry in a pile of money. Like, 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 right. like, 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 that's broke people shit right there. Like, like, <laughs> why y'all? That's, that's some shit you have when your shoes is too tight. Like, yeah. like I don't, I don't, I, I never have gotten it. But, but I, I think that it, it proves uh, that creative people sometimes uh, don't burn off enough energy. I, it just makes me sad because this is an art form I love. Like when you see somebody, like if somebody's a hip hop artist and they see somebody doing something that brings that art form mm-hmm. down. Obviously, you you're gonna have. Or if, if it's a woman you were with, and you see somebody that she's with that is probably not treating her the way you want her to. You feel like that, but I think it's it's clearly enough to, uh, of an audience to go around, and it's enough projects to go around, and nobody has to blow anybody else's candle out to burn brighter. I never thought, I never, I never understood that part of it. And I don't remember people actively like trying to tear down Chappelle when he was the guy. No, or tearing down Rock when he was the guy. No. Or Eddie when he was the guy. I, I mean, I was young, but I don't remember. That. No, I think things like that didn't go viral. Like if they did, we might just not have heard about it. But also. that's what I'm asking him. Yeah, yeah. Did, 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 did I don't think. I think that one, they were so they were singular. It wasn't mm-hmm. like there's never been so many at so at one time. Like there are a lot of uh, people, and I think that they may feel like they competed for the same space. But our we're so individual. Like, uh, but uh, I don't recall the animus. Like when we did Kings of Comedy, I didn't. There, there was never anybody who wanted somebody else to do bad so they could do good. Mm. And and we toured together for a long time. As a matter of fact, we had this situation where if you went over on time, you had to pay a thousand dollars for every minute, and we would do- <laughs> donate that to charity. And wow. we didn't raise a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I am not going over. <laughs> because you just respected people. Right. Like you respected people. Like I, I think that there is this idea, and I, I don't know if it comes from the fact that that social media is so rampant. But this idea that I have to denigrate you in order to elevate myself, and I think it's 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 rooted in in fear and and uh, being um, it's fear, mm-hmm. it's fear that you that somebody gonna take something from you or that you're not enough. And I think that same fear is the one that makes you great. Uh, but it, when you use that way, I think it's detrimental. When fear. Cedric was here, he was saying that the Kings of Comedy two was about to happen. Mm-hmm. And then, unfortunately, with y'all, with yeah. y'all again, uh huh. Wow. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's a lot. You know, what was unfortunate? What happened? <laughs> uh, but, uh, Steve, Bernie, you know, they had a beef, right? Yeah, but they did. And but, then uh, Bernie passed, and it never. But, but then Bernie. So so even at even at that, it would it would have just it just by the time it came about, like we were close to signing a deal, and then something came up, and uh, I think that it, it didn't happen because it wasn't supposed to, but. Um, the idea that you were able to accomplish something that that like that monumental with some people you genuinely love and respect uh, is something nobody can take away from you. So what, what was Stephen Bernie beef about? I think Bernie specifically felt like he wasn't going to uh, people didn't get him like the black audiences got him, but networks didn't. And um, Steve at that time, you know, was on the ascent, and Bernie felt like he wasn't going to get his shot. And I think there was a little bit of resentment there. Like it would be me and Bernie. And Steve instead, because they wanted to show together, me and Bernie would hang out. But I think in the end, uh, in the end, Bernie felt like he wasn't respected and getting what he wanted. In the end, he did. And uh, after he did it, he just didn't want to do it no more. He's like, I'll, I'll, I'll do... I'll do my own thing. So he did the network thing and realized that wasn't shit. In <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so he, he literally was a guy that would do what he wanted to do. So why was... I don't understand. So he was... 
I don't see, he wasn't jealous of Steve, no. was he? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, he wasn't. I, I, I've never seen a more confident human being. Than Bernie Mac? No, never. This dude used to wear colors I've never seen nobody wear before. <laughs> we used to look, wait at the elevator. What is this nigga going to have on today? He like, <laughs> Crayola used to call <laughs> Bernie. Can I get can I get a patent on that? <laughs> but he was the most confident human being. But I think that he, he I think that he felt as if, and if you listen to, um, you know, the, the beginning of the Kings of Comedy, he felt as if that the country would never accept him. And once they got a dose of him, they did. Yeah. Now, like, before we came in here, you were talking about your relationship with T.K. Kirkland. Yes. And telling me things I didn't even know. T.K. was my mentor. I love T.K., man. Yeah, me too. I think that's one of the funniest dudes that ain't never got the shot. T.K. was my, but he had, he, but T.K. was my mentor. Like he yeah. t- My son, Kyle Aris Hughley, is named after his son, Aris. Really? Yes. T.K. used to, T.K. one time used my medical benefits at the L.A. Times to get his teeth fixed. And my wife is mad at me <laughs> from this <laughs> And that nigga just walked away from the bill, like. <laughs> you knew he was. You knew he was using. No, the I, yeah, he said he was me and got his bill. Yeah, I was, you know, he was my, he was my mentor. So yeah. what was I gonna do? How much was Tell that him now? no. Nah, I was a kid then. And then uh, TK the one. <laughs> well, I, we used to live in an apartment in Hawthorne, and TK came over for dinner when his, with his, I think it's is is Hawthorne, New Jersey. Hawthorne, uh, wow. uh, L.A. Oh, uh, in L.A. And he came over for dinner one time, and he's like, "Man, you got to get this apartment together, man. <laughs> you, we had shitty furniture, and I had a baby." <laughs> He really, he really, more than anybody else that I've ever met, um, uh, had for no reason other than he he loved comedy, took me under his wing. Like a matter of fact, when he went under uh, away to tour with NWA, he had two clubs. One was Zeno's and one was Birdland West. He goes away, he lets me host. He comes back, they go, we gonna stay with you. And and he never really, you know, that was my entree into comedy when people would come see me at the Birdland West or Zeno's or at the Comedy Act Theater. TK is he, he's a lot like you and a lot like Chris Rock in the fact that he can talk about things that is going on in just life yeah. in such a cool delivery yeah. on stage. Yeah, he's really giving you life lessons and you laughing he, at him. He really and and I think I've learned that's one thing I learned from him. And I think he's unapologetic. I think he's unflinching. I think he's he also is a confident man. Like to, to me, what's going on in the world, like like I I don't like cowards. I don't like because I spent so much of my life being one when I was a kid. Mm. So now when I see it, I recognize it right away. And it's something that I'm averse to. I don't think that you, I think you can say whatever you want. You just can't keep re-saying it. Motherfucker, yeah, yeah, I said yeah. it. This is what I meant. Yeah. I, I, like to me, that's my whole thing with Kanye. I, I, I get that he's having a mental break. Like I have an uncle who used to think he was a ser- superhero. Now he think he a race car. But it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But you can't keep changing your mind. How do you think you're a risk? Yeah, he, his motherfucker think he he really does. I'm not even like you can't like you can't have these. You can't be bipolar and a superhero. Like how does that work? Like up in the sky, down on the ground, up on the sky. Down, like I, I just don't like when people have an opinion, take heat for it, and then make these nuanced kind of I didn't mean it that way, and I'm trying to be this way, and I have this and I have that. I said this thing. Now you may I'm only responsible for the way I say it. And my intent, you are responsible for the way you interpret. We got to take a little bit of responsibility when it comes to that, though. Sure. And what I mean by that is, like, if we know somebody's dealing with some type of mental illness, like, we know it ain't all there. Right. Why are we taking so much stock in what he's saying? But because the president of the United States of America has him on TV. Yeah, but look at the president that we have. That's what I'm saying. But, There's but the no company. other president, real president, no. that would have Kanye That's in that what I'm or, or anybody that they have. Yeah. Like you would. Like I wonder what the old Jim Brown would think of the old Jim Brown. Like, Man, like my mama, we was when, in the White House. My mama said, "What's Jim Brown doing?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like she couldn't understand yeah. it. She, this this dude, like the people that are in this sphere, the people are in this world. And my my problem with him is that people are dying now. Yeah, people yeah. are dying. You're normalizing behavior that is killing people. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's not about just saying we should reach out to you. You're complicit in the deaths of people by normalizing behavior. We're getting more and more used to this rhetoric. We're getting more and more yeah. used to the things that people say. And when people die, people are dying now. People are saying, well, Donald Trump said this, and the reason why I went and shot this up is because of Donald at, Trump. At, you know, and, 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 and they make these moral equivalents. They go, well, Bernie Sanders supporters shot Steve Scalise. Well, you know, that's like saying Jody Foster is responsible for Hinckley shooting Reagan. Yeah, like uh, Bernie Sanders never said anything to weaponize him or act, uh, give him action. Donald Trump is specifically when you say you are a nationalist, you are using the parlance of the right wing. When you say somebody's a globalist, you are saying what they say, and you don't get to pretend like you don't. And there's no more equivocation. You either are or you ain't. It ain't a little bit. You can't be a little bit pregnant. You can't be a little bit racist. And people will say, mm-hmm. "Well, the economy's so good." And what he says about black people is funny to me. The black, black, unemployment's never been this 
I can't. He can't be racist because unemployment for black people has never been this low. Motherfucker doing slavery was pretty low, and they hated it. Right. <laughs> Everybody worked. That's slavery. a fact. <laughs> you you had a baby, you worked. So stop telling me that. You can be you can be racist. You just can't be a coward. Yeah. You, you you can you can be whatever you want. You just can't be a coward. That's why I. That's why. I, I like where we at right now. I'm gonna yep. be honest with you. Yep. Everybody is just saying what the hell they really feel. Yep. I respect it. Yep. I like it. You know why American history is where it is right now? Uh, the version of America is where it is because of Google. Yeah. It was different <laughs> when you could just say some shit and we didn't know. Yeah. America has a like. You, you know what it's like? Have you ever heard yourself on a recording and you don't recognize how you sound? You're like that doesn't sound like me because you hear yourself from the inside out. Everybody else hears you from the outside in. That's com- America right now. We don't mm. understand how we sound. Right. It's embarrassing when you go to other countries yeah. and you tell them I'm from the United States right. and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Right. And then we can't even accept the truth. Like, uh, D- Don Lemon said that white men are the most dangerous, the, the biggest threat to America. They are. Yeah. Oh, they always have been, though. Yes. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it ain't nothing new. Uh, l- listen, it was pestilence, it was, you know, the frogs, it was famine, and it was angry white dudes. Those are all shit. <laughs> 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 That's all shit God sent. Like, like to me, even even the way, like, the opiate crisis. Stop. <sighs> right. Stop. You. I remember. This is true. During during um, uh, Donald Trump built a temporary memor- memorial to the to the uh, victims of the opiate crisis. You know what they dealt? They built for people of uh, the crack epidemic. They jails. built jails. Jails. Mm-hmm. So even the way we we look at things, and I just don't. I. You can be. You can be whatever you are. You just don't. You can't tell me that you're not that anymore. Right. If you're a racist, be a racist. Take your stand, stay there, and say you know that. who you are. But don't pretend like you didn't. Like when DeSantos called Gillum, uh, when he said monkey, monkey it up, around. you know what you meant. Mm-hmm. I didn't you like know. that one, though. You knew what you meant. only reason I didn't like that one because we got so much direct racism. I'm like, oh, he's still a sucker. He still won't Yeah, but it was say soft. It, it was yeah, soft. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was cowardly. Yeah. I like the voice call. I like the recordings. Better. Yeah, that's hilarious. That was good. <laughs> I, I think white people should be able to dress in, in blackface. And no. when they do, I, I'm telling you, when they do, their credit score should drop <laughs> and their cholesterol should go up. <laughs> and a policeman should break into their apartment and shoot them. I'm, I'm, if, if, we, if white people want to dress in blackface, we should do it on Halloween, make Halloween on election year. And that way, when they go to vote, they get their vote suppressed. There you so, go. It, it's too many ways. Do not, like, I'm Megan Kelly, um, gets to pretend, and people like her, she's more like most white women in this country than she is. Most white women who are educated get to pretend like they, they don't feel that way. They get to pretend like they're benign. But things, they get to turn the other way because they have husbands and, and brothers and, and uncles and neighbors who commit these atrocities and they get to pretend like they don't see them. Mm-hmm. What did you think about her saying, um, just playing clueless? Like, oh, you know, why don't, why can't we wear blackface? It's right. just a costume. If you want to be yeah. Diana Ross and you love yeah. Diana Ross, you should be able to. Yeah, you should. You should be able to Diana Ross, but you under- also understand Sandra Bland got killed with blackface. Yeah. It ain't the popular niggas you like. Look, everybody likes some black people. Right. Everybody likes some black people. It's the ones that, like, to me, you don't get to that. that and, and, and the problem for Megyn Kelly and people of her ilk is they get to really not know. They get to really not know. Yeah, when she said, um, when she said, when I was young, you know, blackface wasn't a problem. I'm like, yeah, because you was around a bunch of white people. Right, who, in blackface. And, <laughs> who, 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 who was rocking blackface. You, yes. you weren't around nobody that was offended yes. by it. Yeah. I, I and, could and tell you it was wrong. And if you were offended by it, you wasn't going to say shit. Yeah. You, listen, speaking out is something. Uh, Charlamagne, being you 30 years ago would have got you killed. That's the truth. Yes, being exactly who you are. Yeah. 30 years ago. So it gets it, me it, almost killed now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. That's why we, I, I, I ain't opening no mail. <laughs> that's so dumb. I don't even understand why they say black people. Do not let black people know bombs is coming in the mail. Ain't nobody getting no money now. Right. I was going to send out the water bill, but the mailbox blew up. So you're going to have to come get this shit. But it's, 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 it, I, I just get tired of people. Um, um, like I was very proud of Nike for the taking the stance they did. But it made sense because Nike needs niggas. Matter of fact, right. that could be the slogan, and we wouldn't even get mad. <laughs> yeah, because we, we, they do. <laughs> you, you ain't never seen the only white dude I know with a shoe deal is Tom Brady, and that motherfucker wear Uggs. Uggs. <laughs> ain't nobody getting to the mall early saying so get the new Uggs. <laughs> yeah. It it it, it 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 makes it makes sense that people are making choices. Uh, uh, that and and the thing about this time is now you have to pick a side. You don't get to you don't get to be benign. But Nike didn't. Nike selling guns to both sides. Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But you never saw most corporations stay out of the fight. Mm-hmm. 
Most corporations pretend like they don't know. Like there were corporations that backed Steve King in Iowa, and they knew he was racist. Mm-hmm. But they most of them stay out of the fight. Nike took his side because it made financial sense. That's that's business. But it, it told for the first time, I think in in Nike and Barack Obama were a lot alike, and they made white people feel the same. White men feel the same way. We don't need you to win. Mm. Barack Obama won without most white men voting for him. Nike was winning without most white men supporting them. Yeah, they don't need it's it, the game. It's a game you can't play. We don't need you. And plus, it's such a it's a brand that ain't nobody getting. Ain't nobody right. getting rid of their Nike shit. Yeah, but but even the Nikes they got rid of look like serial killer Nike. Yeah. Right. the only time you see the Nikes they wear was some for where's that dude is going? This is a size ten athletic shoe. Or oh, the pedophile, the right. pedophile ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those those Nikes come with a white van. Don't you think black people took it a little too far with Nike? Though we started acting like the logo was the black power fist. Yeah. It was a but but like anything else, that's how bad we need to feel good. Mm. That's how bad like I, I'm gonna tell you something. If you may if you do something that resonates in black people, we will fuck with you. Yeah, like yeah. Cosby yeah. made us feel good. We we so we could all look. Look, I'm telling you, no matter what, we, we fuck with R. Kelly. You make a good album. I just saw some video of him performing and they was going crazy Let me tell you in something. the audience yeah. and that was like last week. We will make excuses. I, I know he peed on that girl, but if you're going to pee on somebody, this is the album you need to do it to. Like, <laughs> it, that's how bad, that's how devoid of a of, of, of positive, like we got, ex, we got excited by a comic book hero. Wakanda. In Africa right there. Right. <laughs> right. Like in real Wakanda life. was in Atlanta. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the thing about it that was so tricky is that, you know, it's based on a comic book hero and they led the world in math and science and technology. Motherfucker, that ain't a comic book. That's history. Yes. You did it. Yes. They, 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 they made, you so, we're so devoid of feeling, of knowing ourselves. Hell, hell the Pharaoh was, was uh, the Egyptians and, 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 and the shit that Africans did was way deeper than the shit you saw on the Marvel 100%. comic book. But, but that's how bad we are. That's how bad we need to feel good. Are there any products that you don't use because of what those, uh, the people in charge represent? Or Yeah. I think a lot of fast food products. Look, fast food don't kill more niggas than guns, and it's the only thing generally that advertises on our radio shows. Mm-hmm. And, and then they got a shitty attitude about. It. Like every every week you turn around and some shitty food chain is being disrespectful to niggas. And I'm like, hey man, you need us. Mm-hmm. Like Papa John's, who the fuck gonna keep you alive but us? Like the, some of these shitty ass restaurants. Look, it, don't we the only one who eats your tasteless, nutritionless? food in, in, in great abundance, don't be disrespectful. Let me kill myself in silence. Yeah, because it's affordable. That's why they put them in all the hoods throughout right. America. It's accessible, that's right. it's yeah. affordable, right. and it's advertised. Right. That's it. So so stop. And they are the most disrespectful. Look, I know you are, you are, you are, you are, you are a server and you don't want to be serving food to people you don't like, but you here now. This is a symbiotic relationship. You need me and I need you. So scoop those cheesy biscuits up and shut up. <laughs> Let me go back to the church after this. Some of that shit good, though. I'm so happy for Popeyes. Popeyes is good, yeah, man. Yeah, And it's delivering up. It is good. Yeah. But you wouldn't eat it all the time. No, not all the time, no. But 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 imagine a steady diet of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what's... The, the problem with us is that we have a steady diet physically, spiritually, mm-hmm. and emotionally of shit that's bad for us. Mm-hmm. And you don't even realize it's bad till you're not in the midst of it right. anymore. That's why, like, even with me now, that's why I'm able to go to therapy because I'm not in that hurt right. anymore. You can't heal when you're in the midst of the hurt. Hey, man, let me tell you something. You you never know how much pain. Like, the, the I know my father now that he's, when I learned my father, more about my father when he was dying than I ever knew about it when he was alive. Mm. And black people never know that. Like, we think you can pray shit away. Like, yeah. I never knew who he was and what he believed and what he felt and what hurt him and what loved. Because we don't, we, 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 we put up this facade for everybody to see. We think you, you, you can't, you can't, do this or it'll be weak or you can't do that or it won't be. I, I think that we need to know who we are and we need to know that as great as we are is as flawed as we are. Damn right. And as 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 humane as we be, as we are, do you know why people are afraid of us? Because they've seen how great we are yes. and how base we can be. <laughs> like we, we can be, we can be poets and savages. Yes. Ratchets and righteous. Right. That, that's but the balance of life. That's right. But you can't be they teach, do you realize that, that the tactics of war, Hannibal, who was an African, they teach his tactics in West Point. So we taught you how to fight, we taught you math, we taught you science, and all you believe about, it's, it's, it's these notions to me, like uh, everybody, when they say Chicago, that means black people, right? right? 
the, the, Chicago is a mm-hmm. metaphor for black people. Maine isn't a metaphor for white people. <laughs> you don't Vermont, Vermont is a metaphor for, for white people. You don't go, but it's it's amazing. Like when people say I'm gonna like even with Kanye, I'm gonna we're gonna go fix Chicago and we're gonna do this in Chicago. Most black people don't live in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Most black. So if you fix Chicago, most black people wouldn't have a positive impact. Oh, what about when he went to Africa and said that he's gonna make it like Wakanda? Right, and he has all these plans. Right, they were like. And he and he did and he did make it like Wakanda. In other words, shit stopped happening when the cameras went off. So right. it was just like Wakanda. <laughs> but if but teams. if you if you wanted to fix black people, if you wanted to fix black people, you would fix the problems that plague us, and that would help Chicago. Help, but fixing Chicago doesn't help black people. Fixing, fixing this, the problems the, that the black, black people play, face help yeah, help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like when people won't vote, like people, you ask for candidates like this. You ask for candidates uh, candidates like St- Stacey Abrams. Who said I'm gonna fuck with people who fuck with me? Yeah. I'm gonna do the things that matter to me, like Gillum in 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 in, in Florida. Florida. You asked for somebody that wanted to take stand your ground off the books. You asked for that. You mm-hmm. marched for it. Then get your ass up and do something about it. Better old world. You ain't never seen a white man tell other white men it's wrong for y'all to keep killing black people and not say nothing about it. No. If if you stay home now, you're cowards. You're a pussy. So so don't don't complain. Just let them do whatever they want to you. Listen, I done lost a lot of fights, but I ain't never had one where I ain't try. All right up. Yeah, I done lost a lot. I done lo- lost a lot more than I want. I will say though, um, you do need templates. Like I think that's one thing that we're missing in the black community. Like we de- we need to see one area where everything is thriving for black people. Like how we used to have Black Wall Street. Sure. Or Even the kids in Chicago. Is an example of that. Yeah. yeah. But you and, know, and it's it a reason is. they destroy them shit all the time. Right. It's a reason they systemically or not even systemically they blew Black Wall Street up. Not even purpose. like look at the highway. Pro- look at where all the highways that connected America together. Look what neighborhoods they went through. Mm-hmm. Black wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were look at look at what we were able to accomplish, and then it was look at Chicago how they weren't able to buy houses, how it was racist. They they had these charters where you couldn't buy, uh, you couldn't sell black people homes in certain areas. So all the all the ways that we are deficient. But the one thing that I that I take umbrage to is the most educated segment of American population is black women. They black. They're black. Mm-hmm. The most, the most, uh, the the most, uh, the the, the most uh, enthusiastic, the most, uh, the, the people who who feel like they have the most opportunity for ma- investment is black women. Mm-hmm. They're really our greatest leaders right That's now. That's right. If we really paying attention. So so stop pretending. Do you know what happened in Alabama when Alabama turned that state blue? Ninety eight percent of black women vote. They vote at a higher capacity than than any other ethnicity. It was the fact that ninety four percent of black men did. Do you know what happened? If black men caught up to black women, if we were determined to work as hard as they did, determined to, to, to not take no for an answer like they did, then we would be, the problem in our co- community is we're not their equal, and mm. we pretend to be. Mm. We're not their equal. To find that equal, he ain't going to look nothing like us. Mm-hmm. You're equal educationally. You're equal in terms of, of forward mobility. And you're equal in ter- That's right. You're equal in ter- terms of strength. When black men do what we're supposed to do and lead, and I'm not talking about I'm dominating you, but I ain't going to let you outwork me. Yeah, Minister Farrakhan just said that. He said that, you know, you got all these black women that are doing everything they're supposed to be doing, but the men haven't caught up with them yet. That's, that's, that's a fact. Let me tell you something. I got a friend. His woman used to make him feel good, so she would give him the money to pay out of her purse. Lord have mercy. Come on now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Come on. I've done a lot. I've done a lot. But you know my <laughs> woman ain't never done? Outman me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never let a woman answer the door when bad news is knocking. Yeah. You got to, listen, even if they see you lose, they can't see you not try. That's right. You, you, we, we quit all the time. And black women, we're very supportive, too. Yeah. Like, when our man wants to do something, we're like, okay, at least right. he got there. A little too right. supportive. Yeah, that's right. why we got that's, so many yeah, mixtape yeah, rappers yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If your woman was yeah. able to stop that shit. That's why we're giving you money yeah. to pay <laughs> from out our yeah. <laughs> wallets. There's a scent that a man has, a, a, an attitude he has. You women like remember that Mr. Potato Head? It was a it was a little thing you could make what you wanted to. That's how mm-hmm. women are. <laughs> I'm gonna make this dude a man. Right. You you you. They, they, now I'm not saying men are complete, but they're elements. Elementally, you understand this dude got the raw potential to do this. Yeah. Like you, what you would have been given given the great the great thing about people like you in your position is that all you did was take advantage of the opportunity. And recognize it. Imagine if everybody else saw that. Do you know who does the best in parochial school? And schools that they pay for. 
Black men, black people excel in that. You know why? Because you ain't wasting your mama's money. That's right, because we pay for it. I went to pay when I went to pay. That's school, right. I had to go to school. It was paid. Yeah, for Yeah, but it. you got a little Asian in you too. So, yeah. so, so yeah, come on, <laughs> man, ain't quite the challenge. It ain't fair. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga got yo. Come on, stop with that bullshit. You had to do good. I'm gonna send this clip to all my single homegirls because I be telling all my single homegirls, I'm like, it was not y'all. Y'all fine. Right. Y'all just ain't found y'all equals yet. It, it, it's hard to find your equal. Do you want to date down? Right. You want to date but, down? But, plenty of money. But down doesn't mean, like, my my wife and children are formally educated, and I'm not. But they have, and, and I'm, I'm I'm proud of them having, you know, a, 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 you know an academic acumen. I just, I, I don't have. I'm not, I was never, like, I used to go to the school, in the back of the little school, you know, and the bell would ring, teacher go, that's not your bell. Right. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep yeah, yeah. coloring. Yeah. <laughs> to, to the kids with future get right. to their class. You had to eat lunch before everybody oh, yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to eat lunch with people that... <laughs> you, you know the people you never saw? <laughs> I ate with them. You went bowling on Tuesday? Like if you walked in the cafeteria while they were still in there, you was like, oh. People like, oh, where's the wrong? They used, to, they used to, I'm telling you, and I would be like, I'm not, I'm regular. I ain't supposed to be in here. I'm not. But, but I'm proud of them, but I have something they don't. And that thing is a love and a clearness that they can't, that, that's, and, and I see it, and I, I don't want to, I'm not kidding you, I see it in you and it makes me proud because I see it in a lot of people. And, and I think that it's a reason why you see these people shaping ideas mm. and shaping thought and understanding that we don't all have to say, take the same path. If you want brighter men, put, put, if you want brighter, better men, put more onus on that. Mm-hmm. You could get more. You could get more girls catching, pushing a ball than pushing a book, because the things that are attractive to you aren't the things that are substantive. True. You Tiger Woods, no, but well, Tiger didn't. No black woman was gonna mess with Tiger Woods, a buck tooth Asian dude playing golf <laughs> until he broke. You want men, <laughs> and you want you're interested in making men put place value on the things that will sustain you, as opposed to satisfy you for a moment. I think that women do that. I don't. No, they don't. I do. I think Absolutely not. A lot, of women, a lot of women look at guys who have potential to be this or they're ambitious. And like we were saying earlier, women support their black man to a fault sometimes. Yeah, potential to be a rapper. Yeah. I'm talking no, about, not yeah. necessarily. When's the last time you've seen anybody cheerleading a debate or cheerleading a spelling bee or cheerleading a math <laughs> contest? Because those are things that don't get you a job. You don't see that. But you see somebody run a ball. You see somebody hit a ball. You see somebody drop a verse. So if you want value, invest it early in things that matter. But don't tell me you support me when I'm 35 years old trying to get uh, get off my rap career, rap career. Well, you didn't support me when I was trying to figure out algorithms. That's real. You ain't never got. You ain't never seen a girl shave her legs and go to the library. Nope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I'm so, me a so man. I'm just saying this. It's, you have to invest. You have to. You, if you want to catch a fish, you got to go where they bite. That's that's the thing. But the things that are attractive to us, the things that that are substantive to us. Uh, we don't tend to like. like I don't you know. Don't... Look, I'm an ambassador for the New York Public Library, right? I go to the library. I don't really go Because to... you're Asian. Stop it, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 stop with this bullshit. And you, when you say it, it does, it's not quite the same. And, and you like math, too, right? <laughs> I'm good at it. <laughs> of course you are. But I wouldn't say that I necessarily <laughs> like it. But I will say that. So you can do geometry and like fried chicken. It's fucked up. It's, 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 a, it's a conundrum. Every time you say something, it's exactly the stereotype. I, think that, I like the library. I think that certain women, and what you're thinking about a women like in their entertainment business, those might be the guys that they like. But I think on in general, on average, women are looking for men who are motivated, who are stable, when they're ready to settle down. That's the point. You made exactly the point. Mm-hmm. Men become men. Our idea of masculinity is based on what women like. Mm. Your haircut, the way you smell, the way you dress is based on being attracted to women. And men do the things that they think women like. It's those things. So it starts at a very early age. You are, you know one of the most impactful lessons I ever had? I, got, I had a job and uh, I took my money from McDonald's and I went and bought groceries for the family. I bought all the stuff my mother, my mother liked and all that my mother would buy. And so she came home and, and, and somebody had made groceries and she said, who did this? And I said, I did. And, and my mother made my plate first. Mm. And that's the way I look at women right now. Because it's always like men, our job is to protect and provide. Right. So when you provide for a woman, a woman will look at, look at, treat listen, you like listen, a Listen, and I, I'll go one further. If you're not protecting and providing and, and putting, I can understand why a lot of black women feel like they do because they've never been protected. 
My wife had an experience one time in Calabasas. She was running around a lake. They pulled her over and the police jammed her up. And and after it was over, she called me and I said, why didn't you call me? She said, because I didn't want you to go down there and, and get into a confrontation that could take. It's a hell of a burden mm. to have to subjugate yourself to protect men. So you've never been protected. But I think you ain't shit as a man if you're not protected and provide. The only reason we exist is to protect and provide. That's it. If you don't do that, you should be dead. Now, I what agree. are men attracted to? Would you say? As, uh, <laughs> easiness, <laughs> intellect. It's a lot of things. It depends on how much rum I had. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that it's, it's, it's a movie. Because sometimes men are attracted to the wrong things as well. They are. Always. You're right. Yeah. Always. Always. Because there's a lot of hardworking working women out there that are busting their ass, doing the right thing. Yeah. But subconsciously, men know women that are out of our league, or yeah. we at least think they're out of yeah. our league. And and sometimes we're just petty. Mm-hmm. Some, like, like uh, uh, the the thing I, that always cracks me up about women, I could do that just, just like you. And if I did that, if you did that and you acted like me, I wouldn't value you. If you remind me of me, what the fuck am I fucking with you for? Yeah, be better than me. We ain't shit. Right. Why would I want yeah. to? I don't want you to, 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 to come down my level. Your gigs are, make me rise to yours. But I think that it, to your point, yes, men like low hanging fruit. Men, mm-hmm. so so yeah. You and like I don't think stuff. there's anything wrong with telling a man to put himself in the position of, well, what if I did that? You have to put yourself in. That. You have to put yourself in that. Like I wouldn't do something to you that I wouldn't want you to do to me. I think you're using reason, and that's a silly equation. <laughs> like like we, men who are who are who are who are for the most part, unless they're older, uh, you know, or or have had some experience, like you know, experience shape you. You, like in Carlito's way, I didn't rehabilitate. I ran out of wind. <laughs> but I think that when you try to use that logic to say, if I acted like that, then it would hurt you. It doesn't equate. It doesn't. It, it doesn't register the same way. Cause, cause then you have a competing narrative. You'll have women saying men will be men. Yeah. And then women say, what if I acted like this? M- men at all. Look at, look at. You know, two things is undefeated in American history: pussy and politics. Every pussy in politics, every time, undefeated. I don't care how much a man got to lose. Well, I don't care what's happening. <laughs> I don't care. I don't you're care. right, but when politicians do lose, it's usually because of some pussy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But yeah. I'm saying that th- those are undefeated. So if you if you if you look at all the great things that men have accomplished that have been brought to ruin or by at least to a, a blemish, is there poured? How could somebody be this bright? Like like women go, if you did, if, if you love me so much, you wouldn't do this. You could, I couldn't do that to somebody I love. You you don't have the the psychological. I'm not excusing, it and I'm telling you how wrong it is and how flawed it is. But you use your logic to get me to to the result that you think. But don't you, you think that after you do the same thing over and over again, then at some point it's like, when do you learn your lesson? Ask America that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ask America. But we're talking about people. I think. But but you... I think we're collective. <laughs> right. We're we're a nation of people, mm-hmm. and I think. You You're learn supposed your to lesson. learn from your mistakes, especially yes, right. in a relationship. And generally, you learn your lessons when something horrible happens to you. Right. You're close to dying. It's all like if you look at the black church, there's women, right? Children, dudes who messed up a lot, <laughs> and gay dudes. Right? That's that's the, pretty much the makeup, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I'm saying it's, it's women. I'm Chinese. I don't know. It's, see, now no, you don't kidding. know. <laughs> and you know math, goddammit. You know this equal four. <laughs> it's women, the children that go with, that are forced to go mm-hmm. with them. A lot of dudes who are messed up a lot. Yep. And, and gay dudes who are trying to pay the love of dick out of their heart. That's really, that's the makeup. And they all are there for different reasons. But you can't pretend like you don't understand that that's what it is. And you can't say that because I have a moral compass or because I think... You you can you can you can rationalize almost anything you like, and I think women are just better uh, than us. And our goal, and I said this earlier, and I think I'm being consistent. If we caught up to you in, uh, educationally, uh, in terms of entrepreneurship, we'd be a, a a bulletproof nation. Every bit of evolution and growth that I've experienced over the past four or five years has been been because of women. of course every single. Of course. Bit of course, because you know how you talk about they, you know you you when you hear yourself talk you like huh yeah so it's people on the outside checking you schooling yeah. you and it's like mm-hmm. oh okay I see what I'm doing wrong here. and and I'm I, I'm telling you, even my daughters my daughters who are, I adore them but they were built for men they were built to make men better that's it they were built for that how many you got 
Two. I got three now. Yeah, oof. I would never. Every daughter you have is a bullet in the head of your youth. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Daughters are a blessing. Everyone. I'm no, you telling understand you. what he's saying. Every, yeah. every, yeah, yes. every, every, <laughs> every daughter you have <laughs> is a bullet in the head of your youth. Yes, you got to kill that young nigga yeah. that, you, that still yeah. might exist in man, you. Any little young oh, way you got, got oh, to go. Man. <laughs> I know that my life is much richer for having them in my life, mm -hmm. but I will live five years less longer than I would. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm 82, I could have got 87 <laughs> if it wasn't for you, motherfucker. <laughs> but but they, it's filled with life. But I mean, I'm just this just the way that they 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 are. But I, and I think when I when I when I you can tell when a man not just has uh, daughters but loves them. That's right. You can tell the way he the way he computes the way he sees things. Like I have a relationship with my daughter. That we used to be very, very close, my youngest daughter. We were very, very, very close. Then she found out who I was and the things I'd done. And she distanced herself from me. And now we're getting very, very close again. Wow. Because you can't have an image of the image of who I was in her head has to die. Mm -hmm. And they can only be a, without a death, there can't be a resurrection. All I ever want my children to know is who I am. Mm. Who I am. Right. Not who, who they, but now the, the, the notion of who I was was an idea of me. And the reality to me is significantly different. Mm. But but I am comfortable with both of those things. I'm comfortable with you knowing who I uh, you, who you wanted me to be and who I am. My daughter said, I want to marry a man who's just like you and nothing like you. Right. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. I did something right. Well, I'll even, take it. Even with that said, though, I guess she could be talking about you at home and then you're on you stage know she's that's nice that's that, that, yeah. that. no she she's talking about finding out the shit i've done yeah, that yeah, means yeah. your wife did a great job of keeping that from sure. her as well well no no women tell themselves stories mm -hmm. and, and 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 people tell themselves stories i should be specific and we have a romanticized notion of who we who our parents are and who they they, they. but the one thing that my daughters uh, i think my children know about me if you in trouble and I don't get to you, I'm dead. And they also know I've done a lot of shit that hurt their mother. Right. So I guess between those two continuums of experience, that those two variables is where you find them at. Them at. I know he'll love me and no matter what, and I know he's done some shitty stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, you know, it's so funny you say that because that's how I look at my father. And like, so when I was doing dirt cheating on my wife, I'm like, I don't, I got to cut this out because I don't want my daughters to look at me right. the way I look at my right. father with that mm -hmm. same exact thing. Yep. You're a good man, but you was fucked up yeah. father. But you know, my it's so funny because my daughters love my wife's father and he, he's like, I'm like, he's doing the same shit I'm doing. Well, he's granddaddy though. I know. You gotta think, the he, that's the way, you got to think way too back. That, it's, it's, it's like, so it's, <laughs> it's so funny being an artist, being, you know, uh, you know, I, I try to be as clear as possible, and I try to be as unflinching as possible, and and it's one of the reasons I, I kind of like this collective, uh, but um, I I don't revel in the things I've done. I just I'm not afraid to examine. It. That's it. That's it wholeheartedly. That's why I mean that's that's what therapy is about. That's what yeah. all it is. That's what growth yeah. is about. Yeah. Like if I can't step back at forty and look at how fucked up I may have been in my twenties, yeah. early thirties, then what are we doing? But it's it's so great that it happened young. Like I remember, me, my wife used to make me go to therapy. We used to go to therapy all the time, all the time. And it was a dude, two hundred fifty dollars, to tell me, "Why do you act like you act?" Cause I, I I'm I like I like it. I, I'm not one of them dudes. <laughs> like I didn't dislike what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like I. This is me. But I dislike how it made people feel. Right. I don't, I don't, I mean, I have a, a, a great fucking time. Are you kidding? This shit is fun. <laughs> I'm having a, a blast. <laughs> now get me some more antibiotics and let's keep this shit going. <laughs> I hate how it made them feel. So Word. it's selfishness, really. Yeah. But I, yeah, but I think by definition, you can't do what we do and not be selfish. Yes. All you're doing is going to look at me, listen to me, hear yeah. me. So you can't take that and not. It's it's so funny to watch Angie be hurt and some of this shit. I'm she's so judgmental. No, she, she is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the black broad in you. That ain't the, <laughs> let, switch back to the Asian chick. Let's talk about math. They'll they'll be they tolerant of you if you know if they know you're doing the work to get better. Right. That's all. They will. That's they it. will. And, and it don't and, and it's incremental, but it's not. Are you doing the work? 
what or why are we talking about that? Yeah, I have to. I I have to because my wife is like, I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, you know, like our kids are grown. Mm -hmm. Like my problem right now is that my kids are grown and I feel like I've done my job and I should be able to kind of relax. Mm -hmm. But they feel like you should still, like right now they're grown and I'm their father, but I'm only their father when they need something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm your father when shit, <laughs> but, but when you're not, so it's a whole, but they still have to learn. Like the, the one thing about my daughters that's so funny to me, they can do, they're the only women that can do anything to me and I still have to be their father. I that's still right. have to reach out to them. That's right. I still have to. I, I still have to, you know, be uh, uh, their beacon. No matter who they're with, no matter what happens, they don't have to do that to me. They All you got is daughters. I got a son too, but yeah, he's yeah. retarded. So he oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. He's slow. I love my my son is the best slow son. Like if you, I'm not trying to be funny. If you had a dude that my son is the most warm, wonderful. Um, he, he is the the best thing I've ever done, mm. and he is. My my son loves his father. Like th this is how close me and my son are. We go to work. We go to work out together, right? White people see my son kiss me on the cheek, and they thought we were gay <laughs> because that's the only example of black love they could equate. To. <laughs> wow. My son looks just like me. Wow. They they would come up to us and go, "It's so nice, you guys are openly affectionate, and nobody." I said, "That's my son." Wow. But they're but we're, they're so devoid of positive images of a man just loving his seed that they thought we were gay. You know what, man? Now that you say that shit, you make me think about, like, I remember one time it was just me and my daughter on a plane flying to South Carolina, and the flight attendant came to check, and he was like, is that your daughter? And I'm like, I hope so, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's so devoid. Like, it, it has to be something in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is. It, because th this notion of who we are. My son used to get mad at me because I used to make him kiss me when he left the house. And You better come kiss me. You don't pay rent. You better kiss me on my face. <laughs> right on my face. <laughs> And he said, Daddy, when we when am I gonna stop doing this? I said, when one of us ain't here. Do you know what I get a girl to kiss my father right now? Right. Mm -mm. You better kiss me, nigga, and that's act real. right. And I think that that's what the world, the world needs to see us broken, and they need to see us struggling. They need to see us uh, falling up, falling down again. All The problem is they only see us one way. Mm -hmm. You know what's so interesting about you, DL, man? I remember back in the day when you had that CNN show. Yeah. And I remember everybody would say, why does DL Hughley got a CNN right. show? <laughs> but, now, <laughs> but now you can see exactly why DL Hughley needed a CNN show. Like, you're, ver you're so well-versed on politics, social issues, relationships, yeah. all of that good stuff. Because you get your ass with... I, I, knew I, wasn't, I knew I wasn't ready for CNN. But I knew I had to... I, I went to CNN the same reason I married my wife. I knew I wasn't ready, but I was going to try to get ready. Yeah. Like I, I always loved her. I knew I was in love with her. I knew, and I knew I was gonna be full of shit. I knew I would be. <laughs> but I said, if you stick with me, I, I, I'll try my best to make it work. Like I knew I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And I think that that that's. But I'm not afraid to to lose. Did she give you an ultimatum, or you just felt like you had to? She gives me ultimatums all the time. Oh. <laughs> that one you took. <laughs> she gives me ultimatums all the time. Mm -hmm. But it, it, in the end, I. I, I got to be what I am. And what I am is what I am at that moment. It's nice uh, for people, like, they've been watching Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett and Will Smith and seeing the problems. Because people will look at them and be like, that's relationship goals, that's this, that's that. But people have to see that relationships are far from perfect, even though that's Hell what you yeah. might imagine when you see celebrities. You know why women leave? Because they can't. And In other words, if there's not enough there to make me stay, to your point, I'll leave. Mm -hmm. If there's not something that's keeping me there, and I'm not talking about money, and I'm not talking about sex, and I'm not talking about children. I'm talking about if there's something that's not hooked into me. If I can't see something past these current circumstances, I'll leave. So they leave because they can't. Mm. And they stay because they don't have a choice. You have to be resonant enough and enough enough to have people want to be there. Right. I agree with that. I think that's why less people are getting married a lot later now than they used to. Yeah. Because women don't have to. And people are getting divorced a lot more also just because women don't have to stay. Nope. We don't feel like we don't have nope. other options. Hey, look, I used to, and you you grew up, I used to know men that had families on the other side yeah. of town. You goddamn my daddy. Absolutely. Yeah. My yeah. daddy had a whole, he left the woman, he left my mom for this woman. Yeah. They had a the family a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> they right on. Truck parked right in the driveway. And you know what else? The the woman used to know about it and send food. You Go take this over to Miss Johnson. Lord, take these old mercy. clothes over to Miss Johnson. Do you know why they stay with that man? Because in their estimation, 
How did a man that worked as a janitor take care of two families? <laughs> but he did it. Like, I remember I, once I asked myself, oh, my man, I said, do you love me? He said, nigga, I ain't got time to love you. I'm trying to feed you. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. You can have a hamburger. You can have a hug. <laughs> <laughs> because that was it. But there was something in them. At least I know I'm going to be taken care of. Right. And that's and, enough. Yeah. When you try, when you're just trying yep. to survive every day, that's enough. My, my, my biggest fear is that that someone will do something and I can't get there. Mm. But I don't. I, but but I can only be what I am. But I want my children to be with people who at least have that. Right. At least, at least know that nothing's gonna stop me from getting to you if I have to. So Does you like make... your daughter's boyfriends? No. Okay. I don't. They, and she's gonna hear they it. Know that? Yeah, they know it. How could you not? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't like. I don't like that because they. I'm always their first off. If I'm your first officer, you don't need to What's say. he there for? That's real. Goddamn right. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> and, and, and plus, I have the kind of daughters you have to be, look, in power of boys of vacuum. Either you're going to be in charge or they're going to be in charge. And if they're in charge, they're going to resent you for it. Mm -hmm. And I and I see it. They're going to resent you. How many times you seen a woman with a man and she he's perfect and he's good and she likes him, but he makes her make all the decisions. He cedes to her too much. She feels like she's the man in the relationship, and she'll wake up one day and hate him right. for no reason at all. Nigga, why are you breathing? <laughs> and it's based on nothing. It's because somebody has to lead, and that leadership has to be ironclad. Do you ever tell your daughter that, like, well, you, of you, course. You, you fucking this nigga, and he can't give you no of money? Of course. Like, 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 I mean, and, and the dude is bright and yeah, make yeah. money and, and cool. Like, dude, everything that my my, 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 my my old lady like. Yeah. I'm like, look, look at I need. I want her to be with a lion. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lion. Now, I, I, I want my children to be with lions. That's real what you said. Not about savages. Lions. But, but, yeah. but that single-minded determination. That's real what you said about, too, not like your biggest fear is that something happens to them and you can't get there, so right. you want them to be around people. Right. Like, I, that mindset makes me be the person that I always want that to be around my kids, the right. other people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, my old man... My, you know how your people are like, oh, you should be there when he died. You know, I, I, I saw Shay. My father didn't want to see me to see him like that. I did that because a woman told me I should do that. Yeah. You should see it. No, nah. I, I should have let him go and live with that memory. I, he never wanted to know that. Mm -hmm. I don't want. I don't want my children ever to see me like that. Right. I want them to always know who I am. D.L. Hughley, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can watch his Netflix special. It's out right now. Contrary. Yes. And my in my book, How Not to Get Shot, Not Advice from White shot. People. And you um you gonna be at Caroline this weekend? All this weekend. I'm coming. I, I like when you say that, that Angie. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, <laughs> Forget it. The show probably sold out, buddy. <laughs> we just had this nice deep conversation. I'm sure they sold out. <laughs> no, the Saturdays are Friday. Okay. Are you there Friday and Saturday? Sa Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right, y'all go check DL Hughley out at Caroline's. You can go get tickets at Caroline's on Broadway.com. DL, it's always a pleasure when you pull Likewise, up. Likewise, man. man. I'm I'm so proud of you, Mark Twain. <laughs> I can't read. I can't read the read the, read the nigga Huckleberry Finn. It's gonna. Be <laughs> I'm telling you what. It's, it's D. L. Hughley. It's the Breakfast Club. <laughs>